Hello, welcome back to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today, we're gonna to talk about building your own toolbox of tools in Reaper. So most other DAWs don't use like a multi-tool approach. They have single use tools. You click on the tool and then you do just that thing and then you switch to a different tool. Reaper doesn't really do that. Personally, I, I love that about it, but there are situations where a dedicated tool just saves some clicks and uh, it just makes things easier in some situations. So what we're gonna do is set up kind of as many different tools as I can think of to create a toolbox of these single use types of tools. Let's go. So we're doing this today specifically because Bixie Docs has asked me in my most recent video and uh, yeah, and it, it's easily done, but I realized that it's probably something I haven't talked about enough, and I don't think a lot of people know about this topic. I think this will also be a good overview of creating toolbars and working with the action list and things like that. We're gonna go to the menu editor, and that's in the options menu. Options, customize menus toolbars. That brings up this window. And in my case, I have toolbar seven as an unused toolbar. So we're gonna customize this one. You can use floating toolbar one if that one's available. For me, toolbar seven is the first unused one. And if we wanna to see toolbar seven as we're working on it, let's uh, let's open that up. So we go, we just right click on the main toolbar, go to open toolbar, toolbars one through 32, and then select toolbar seven. And there's our toolbar. If yours looks different than mine, we're looking for frame. Preferences slash appearance, frameless floating toolbar windows. So let's disable that and you see it's got this sort of familiar frame. Um, I'm not a fan of that. So I like that. The frameless one, it's a little less obtrusive. Sometimes it gets hidden in plain sight, but anyways, that's how it, you can get, make yours look just like this one. So we're gonna select where it says edit me. That's the first sort of empty button in the toolbar. Um, and we will remove it. Now we're going to click add and the action list comes up. In the action list, we're now going to select our different actions to create our tools. So first thing I think of for a toolbox might be a way of cutting things. So let's do split item. If we do split item, there's a lot of actions here. Split items at edit cursor and select right is what I would personally choose, but maybe experiment with no changing selections or splitting under the mouse cursor. Now, the way that we're going to set this up is we're going to have a toolbar button, we're going to right click it to arm the action, and then every left click will perform that action. Any left click will move the edit cursor. So whether you use mouse cursor or edit cursor, it will always move the edit cursor, but uh, this one will obey snap to grid, and the split item at mouse cursor, under mouse cursor, will not obey snap to grid. So for me, I think the best option here is um, select right. And this one will also work with grouping, uh, which is ideal. So I will click on select, and that adds it to the list. Now the next tool will be a way to delete items just by clicking on them. So it's going to be remove item. It's in here somewhere, there it is. Item, remove items. So again, click on select. Now, how about muting items? Sometimes you don't wanna completely delete the item from your timeline, but you might want to mute selected items or, or items as you click on them. So let's do mute item. And I think we need to add properties. There it is. Toggle mute will be the next one. So click on add. Now let's click close and click on apply. And now we can see these toolbar buttons here. We can customize the appearance and we'll, we'll get to that. But for now, let's just test this out. So I'm gonna right click and it animates this toolbar button so that you can see that it is active. Now, if I click here, if I click it's really anywhere, it's going to automatically snap to grid. I can change my grid size or I could turn off snap to grid, rearm that. And now if I click here, it's gonna split right where I clicked. Notice the item got selected on the right side of the split and the edit cursor uh, also moved. All right, so if we're done with this action, we just hit the escape key, top left of your keyboard, 
and that will disarm the action. There's other ways of disarming the action. I always find that to be the easiest. Now let's arm the remove items button. So I'll just click on this item and it removes it. Just like that. Undo a few times to bring back that item. Now let's do toggle mute. I'm just gonna right click to arm the action. And now that is muting the items that I click on. When I think about a toolbox, I think I also need a way to connect things together. So how about a glue function? So we're gonna click on add, type in glue item. And there are a bunch of items here, but it's going to be uh, glue items ignoring time selection. We're gonna select that. Now in this case, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on a copy of these items here. They both need to be selected um, to run this. So uh, glue items ignoring time selection, we're going to hit apply. And now we've got a glue items ignoring uh, time selection. This one doesn't necessarily need to be armed. Actually, it's probably best if it's not armed. So you just do a left click and it, it runs that, that action. And I'll just undo. So now they're ungrouped. And again, if I left click, that applies immediately to those selected items. Now, what happens if you glue items, but if we arm this action and we glue the item, just clicking on it, that creates a new wave file. So this is now an independent wave file. It's only this sound. It's not all the other stuff that was underneath the other ones. Another function for the toolbox would be a way of measuring things. So item ruler, display item ruler, and we can choose the format time ruler. Select and close, Let's put that at the end, I guess, and apply. And now we've got display item ruler. So I can right click on that. And now clicking on item will show or hide its time ruler. Probably not something you use a lot, but it may be helpful. All right, so another one I thought of was a way of fading items. Actually, I know that I've got a shortcut for it, so there it is. Item fade in, fade in to cursor. So I'm going to select that one. I'm gonna fade out to cursor, which is my other action, and there. So select and close. Now I've got two actions for fades starting to fill out here. So I will arm the fade items action. And then when I click, oh, they went in the wrong order. So let's just fix that before we continue. So uh, the order of the buttons makes a difference. You can just drag and drop to reorder those. And now I can apply that. And so my fade in is this action and it's wherever I click. So I don't need to like find that target like normal, right, for dragging. I can just click and it fades out or fades in depending on which of the uh, buttons I arm. So if you're doing a bunch of items and you're only doing fade outs, that can be a, a, a very efficient way of doing it. One more that I thought of, which you might find helpful is the zoom tool. Now the zoom tool is going to be an SWS function. And this is another one that you just left click and it will automatically use that function. SWS zoom tool marquee. So select and close. Uh, so I'm gonna hit apply and that zoom tool is active. I can just left click the zoom tool and the edit cursor changes. And if I make a selection, it's going to zoom my screen to that selection. Let's zoom out of my screen capture. And you see it, it fills the entire screen. Now, if I click that button again, the cursor changes again and it's got now a, uh, a minus sign and just a click anywhere will return to the previous zoom level. So that can be that can be pretty helpful, right? So we can instantly undo the zoom, or I can make a selection again and it zooms in even further. Now let's think about customizing some of these to add icons to these. We just double click and then we uh, we get the icon picker.
may not be a icon for every function here. A lot of them will have a, a function. The one I clicked on was the zoom tool, so we're gonna look for a magnifying glass, even the word zoom, and uh, sure. We can keep this window open, by the way, and double click on the next one, and now we can do ruler. Oh, there's no ruler. I think we just have to do a, a text label there. Fade. There's a couple different item options for fade, uh, but none of them are really good for me. So again, glue items. I'm sure there's a glue. Glue toolbar item. Let's double click on mute. And there is a mute on off icon. Remove items. Oh yeah, double click that. Remove, we'll look for eraser. There's an eraser and split items. Split can be um, like a razor blade or it can be um, type in split will show a few things like the split icon. Um, but looking through here, there's also like a knife, like a scalpel. Let's do the razor blade. All right, and when we're done, we can close this window, click apply. Now those buttons are customized with different icons. Now for the other ones that don't really fit with uh, or don't have an icon created for it yet, we can right click, we can choose set tooltip text icon. Now in this window, we have the new name for it. So originally it shows uh, sort of a shortened form of the original text, say item ruler is the new name and the mode text icon with default tooltip. And then click OK and apply. And now it says item ruler. If you don't like that armed toolbar button animation, you can check this box and then they will not animate. So we're going to the split tool, it will just change color. It goes to red or sort of inverts the colors. I kind of like the animation. It makes it a little clearer. I think it draws attention to itself and, and I'm less likely to make a mistake with that one. Some of the actions you choose, which have toggle states, um, you can choose a different uh, function for that. I've got mine set to do not animate. Uh, let's do animate if toggle state enabled. So again, uh, oops, apply that. And now you can see that that's enabled. So all of these tools apply when you click on an item. There is another method of creating tools for dragging, and this is exclusive to Reaper 7, and there's two already made in the main toolbar. Uh, maybe you've noticed them, maybe you know about them. Here in the main toolbar, obviously your toolbar is gonna look a little different from mine, but um, we've got this razor tool, and so making a drag will create a razor item. Um, and there's also the marquee select for selecting groups of items uh, with just a left drag. And that one automatically turns off. So what those actually are, are a, a special set of the mouse modifiers. So editing behavior, mouse modifiers, and that is arrange view override A, B, C, and D. So a range view is your your main your your main uh, drag actions for uh, well for right drag within the range view, but we could also have overrides which apply to left drag. So marquee select items, and then there's a couple of modifiers for adding shift and adding control. So marquee select items, this marquee select tool is actually called a range view override A, and if you're customizing that menu or adding this to your toolbox. Uh, that would be main toolbar and uh, override mouse modifiers for razor editing arrange view B. And mouse modifiers set arrange view override mouse modifiers A until next mouse up. So that that's the full name, but I've got a different icon for it in the default toolbar. Marquee select and razor editing. Yeah, so if you want to customize a range view override C, which 
uh, is optimized for fixed latent comping or, or mode D, which is for selecting time, you can uh, customize these here. So again, these are things that would only apply to left drags, uh, where left drag normally makes time selections in the range view. You can customize that. You can override that with functions that are temporary. They disable when you mouse up or they stay active like the razor added one. There are several actions for those. You just have to choose uh, which one. So clear will go back to your default. You can choose A or A until mouse up through to D and you can toggle them on and off. So with that, we've made a toolbox of single purpose tools for editing faster in Reaper. Hypothetically, I like the keyboard shortcuts. That's what works best for me, but it may not be what works best for you. Different strokes for different blokes, right? Anyways, uh, if you have any other suggestions for tools, put them down in the comments below. I think I, I, I that's everything I could think of, but I'm sure there's more. Uh, there's, I'm sure there's more things you could do with this. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Blue Sky. Uh, links down below. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon or YouTube memberships and go to reaper.blog for more tutorials.